It's Alex Belfield talking to the stars of Emmerdale and we've got one for you now who's gorgeous and talented Emma Atkins. How are you? Thank you very much for that comment. Um, I'm good. How are you? Well, this is a bit strange, really. You're in Leeds, I'm in Leeds and I've had to come all the way down to London to talk to you. You must be very important. Um, I wouldn't go that far, but I think we just happened to be in a lovely hotel called the Soho Hotel, we, we must uh, mention that, where we, we've had the viewing for the Dingle DVD, which is why we're both here in London. <laughs> why must we mention the hotel? They're not paying me, are they paying you? No, I just mean, I do like this hotel. I don't know why, I, we, we mustn't, we don't have to mention this hotel, but I do like it. Have you seen the squirrely whirly wallpaper? Let's mention it again. The next time we stay, we'll get a free upgrade. <laughs> the Soho Hotel, uh, I can't remember the address, but uh, check it out online. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're in the middle of the mucky bit of London, really, aren't we? Which is convenient for afterwards. Yeah, I like a bit of mucky London. There's nothing <laughs> like Soho. I mean, Leeds just doesn't compare, does it? There's no muckiness in Leeds, really. I do love Leeds. I don't know whether you're trying to take me down that avenue of, um, you know, negative comments about Leeds. I can't say much negative about Leeds. Uh, what can I say? No. I'd be pretty stupid. I'm on BBC Radio Lee, so it wouldn't be in my interest <laughs> no, to slag it, it off. It wouldn't be in your best interest at all, no. And maybe we mention the cakes. I mean, we don't get that very often. You sit here and this. what do they call those, cupcakes, are they? They are cupcakes. The green one looks slightly tempting, but then, is it soft? Yes, it is, and I've just touched it. I'm going to have to take it home. Wait a minute, somebody can't eat that after you've stuck your no, finger in I, it. I, I, was, I was told I, was, I could help myself. Now listen, you can't be your weight and you eat cupcakes. We know this isn't possible. Um, I don't eat many cupcakes. I think one bite and you've, you've, you've had one. You've had one bite, you've had a million. Listen, you're a bit of glamour in this soap because, let's face it, we need a bit of totty to look at. No, no, don't sit there grimacing, Emma. Tell us about your character and your role. My character, Charity Dingle, she is sort of... L love to hate her. She's so naughty but nice. She's a bit of bad, a bit of good. Um... What else can I say? She's always up to no good. And when she is, the audience keep coming up to me and saying, we need more of the old charity. <laughs> so I think the storyliners must must know that because they're, they're continuously taking me down that route of um, slap my hand, shouldn't be doing that kind of thing. So that's what I love about your character. You've kind of got a wink in your eye, haven't you? You're always up yes, to something. sparkle. Um, she seems to get away with it. She always seems to be able to rip about... 25 people off in the village and then someone new moves in and says I like the sound of you I want to work with you and you think surely by now those 25 people would have said don't go near that woman you know she's bad news is it fun working on Emma down now because a they work you very hard you've got about 300 episodes a week to stick out and you're in most of them um it's an interesting cast as well now they've gone for some big names who have kind of upped the profile a bit yeah, they have, and I'm honoured to be part back here doing what I, I love doing, playing this brilliant character that was created by John Chambers. And, yeah, it, it's it's lovely right now. It's 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 certainly in a great position. Um, we've had the big Aaron storyline, which has been so successful, and there's been countless people writing in and just congratulating the show as a whole with that storyline because it was very sensitively dealt with um, in terms of Paddy... Um, you know, finding out everything about that storyline was brilliant, seeing Lucy and Danny work together. And I was um, a little bit quiet during that time, which was brilliant. And, and now Kane, um, Kane and Charity are, you know, up to their tricks again. And I'm going to be working a lot with Chris Bisson because Jay and Charity have a lot, um, a sort of business tie together. So generally speaking, it's it's an exciting time for the show and I'm, I'm privileged to be on board again. When I say the smell of these cakes are distracting me, I can't think about Why what you're talking you about. Have a bite and then you'll calm down. Would that be inappropriate, <laughs> though, in the middle of an interview? I don't think They'd so. They'd be sat here masticating and all of that goodness <laughs> on the air. You don't need that, do you? Oh, no. <laughs> you're right, though, about the uh, Danny storyline that's just been on. We had him on the programme just before oh, he started. Man. And phenomenal actor. I mean, I know I've listened to Paul O'Grady ranting and raving about how brilliant he is. And he's, he's just really encapsulated that part and done it so perfectly. Yes, my mum did actually say that she's been watching the Paul O'Grady show loads and that he he's constantly referencing the show and saying how excellent Danny is and I have to say you can't really disagree because and he's genuine as well he's very raw and enigmatic and it's just brilliant everything he does he's sort of it turns to gold because he's just he's just being himself he's not trying he's just I don't know there's a truth about it which I think resonates with a lot of people the soap, of course, still comes from Yorkshire, and you're based in Leeds. Do you live in Leeds? I've just moved to Harrogate. Oh, um, oh yeah. Very posh. <laughs> it's, it's posh, and it's not posh. It's, I just like it. I like the people. I like the stray, being able to walk. I just kind of 
want to get a dog now. I'm getting sort of um, a nesting Old. sensation going on, yeah. Are you knocking on a bit? Is that what's uh, happening? Well, I'm 35. I'm still very, very young. <laughs> very, very young. <laughs> How hard is it working on this soap? Because I know the Corrie people say it's the best fun in, wo- in the world, which, of course, you're going to say. Um, but they do work you long hours, and you can be outdoors a lot, and it can be cold in the winter. Um... Yeah, I just think, you can't think about it too much. The other night we were doing two night shoots back to back in the village and it was absolutely freezing. But you just have to say, well, I'm doing the best job in the world. So what, it's freezing, get get over it, you know, just deal with it, get your thermals on. And there's nothing like a f- bit of country air. And I much prefer, I'm always alone in this, because um, I was saying to Charlie Webb, I much prefer working in the village and Charlie prefers working in the studio, but that's because Charlie's warmer, whereas I just love, there's something very real and open and free about the live, about working in the, in the countryside, in the village, and I love it, even when it's cold, as long as you're wrapped up with your thermals. And generally speaking, silk thermals are what's needed in those climates. Are you like me as well? I'm just glad to have a job right now. There aren't many around, are there? I think... I can completely agree with you on that. Yeah, I feel very lucky to be in work. Uh, certainly, a, as an actor, as point of view, from an actor's point of view, um, yeah, we're all struggling for jobs, and you know, when those of us that are in work are damn lucky to be where where they are. And so, yeah, I speak, I speak with you on that. And again, without buttering you up too much, everybody seems to say that there's the best writing and the best soap is Emmerdale right now. I, I think I probably agree with that. It's the most proper. It's not as silly as Coro, which I love. Don't get me wrong. The humour, I think, is the best in Coro. His standards are just too depressing for me. You've got a nice balance, haven't you, in the middle with Emmerdale? Yeah, and also with, with each soap, I think we all go on our little circuit of, you know, there's going to be months where it's brilliant. There's going to be months where it dips a bit. I think that's that's the organic process of soaps because it's forever changing. Changing, so a storyline might might happen that maybe isn't as successful, or um, I, I, d- I don't really know. I think at the moment we do seem to have a winning formula, and um, it's exciting to be on board. But I, I, I would say about all soaps is that everybody goes through that um, successful time and then dips a bit, and it's nice to have it like that because then you, if it's always, always, always brilliant and everyone's always bragging about how brilliant, I don't know. It's just a bit of overkill. I think it's quite nice to have a sort of peaks and troughs and right now it's it's a nice peak <laughs> and do you watch yourself back yes i haven't watched myself for ages actually um and when i do i generally just squirm and think why am i even watching this because you always find something to pick out whether it's you know a double chin or a spot or oh, yeah i can see that from here your double chin stand <laughs> no, out so no, far that, that's my point is we're all so self-critical <laughs> well i know i am and it's so silly because at the end of the day i'm living i'm breathing and i'm working on a great soap you know shut up kind of thing so i do <laughs> it's a good camaraderie as well do you all get on well brilliant yeah love everyone um in fact we just watched the screening of the dvd um and working with steve Halliwell, Jane Cox, Jim Hooten, Jeff Hordley and Lucy Pargeter and Eden, who's brilliant as the, um, as Belle. And certainly she's amazing in this DVD. I urge everyone to go and buy a copy when it's out because it's ace, even just for to see Eden's performance. She's amazing. Um, but yeah, we all just gel because um, there's not very many egos. So you just get on with it and have fun. And very quickly, the story of it, it's called The Dingles, it's out on DVD now. What's it about then? It's called For Richer, For Poorer, and it's a sort of sliding doors situation where The Dingles, um, you see Zach and Belle going to buy a lottery ticket, and it's the thing of what if they had won the lottery and then cut to, and then you sort of see that. So it's just brilliant because you see that universal truth of love conquers all and money isn't everything, and as sort of um what's the word obvious as that sounds there's a real simplistic truth about the storyline and it comes through from all the performances i think above all steve and jane as lisa and zach and and then bell constantly urging zach to tell lisa the truth that they haven't actually won the lottery it's very moving in in many parts which there's a real um, narrative going on. I think it's really good. And do they pay you extra for this? Because they should. I mean, they're making money out of it. 
pay me extra to sit here and... Well, not to talk to me. Nobody would pay to talk to me. I'm talking about the DVD. <laughs> oh, um, well, obviously, it's another little job <laughs> in the melting pot that is Emmerdale. But, um, I, I mean, initially, I was supposed to be in it a little bit more than what I was. But with work commitments in the show, um, they had to cut myself and Jeff a few of us you know out of a few scenes just because of work commitments um but yeah of course it's it's a job good for you I'm just worried about you that's all Emma really nice to see you and uh, thanks for talking to us today and come and see us when you're in the studio in Leeds again let's get a date in the diary (laughs) thanks a lot thank you